And on this video, I'm gonna show you all of these features and the accessories that you get with this dash cam, as well as show you test drive footage both the day and at night to see how well it actually performs. I also like to remind you that I have placed a link in the description down below if you'd like to look at this dash cam further or acquire one for yourself. Hi guys, welcome back. I am Alex and I review cool car gadgets and other accessories for your vehicle. So if those are the kind of things that you like, make sure you subscribe by hitting the button down below to see more videos like this. But now this thing Take a look at the Coxpal A11T and in the front we have the Sony sensor which is the IMX335 5 megapixel sensor and in the back we have the Sony sensor IMX 307 sensor which is a 2 megapixel sensor and this is what I really like about how they designed this dash cam. Everything is integrated so I have a front camera and the cabin camera in one unit. Also we have a very tiny 1.6 inch screen which is just enough for us to be able to access the dash cam and control the settings. However this does have Wi-Fi as I said earlier so we can also control this dash cam via an app. And towards the top we have the mount and we have the input for the rear camera in the form of a USB-C type connector. But going back to the cabin camera, what's around the camera it's actually infrared lights and this is what's going to light up the cabin and provide true night vision even in complete darkness. And on the right hand side of the dash cam we have the memory card slot and as I mentioned earlier this supports all the way up to 512 gigabytes of memory. Let's take a look at the rear camera. It's always nice to see when they package things so well and organized. And here is the rear camera. And the rear camera is using the CG2053 sensor, which is a 2 megapixel sensor. And as you can see, to mount the rear camera, they have included this double sided tape, which I can peel and then stick this to the rear windshield of my vehicle. You also see where the cable gets connected that is going to tie the rear camera to the front dash cam. And we can also see that this body was made to rotate, so we can adjust the view of the camera by pulling this up or down. So now let's take a look at the actual cables that connect the camera. And looks like we got two of them over here. Yep. So this is the cable that is going to connect the rear camera to the front dash cam. And as you can see, it is a USB-C tie connector. And this cable has an approximately length of 5.5 meters, which is about 18 feet long. And now let's look at the contents of the second accessory box. And it looks like they pack quite a bit inside of this little box. First off, we have the power cable for the dash cam. Let's get this guy out. And the power cable has a USB-C type right angle connector and it's approximately 3.5 meters long, which is about 11 feet long. And we also got this little spatula and then we have the mount for the dash cam itself. Let me show you how this works. And here's what the mount looks like. And what's great about this mount is that they have integrated the GPS antenna in here. Again, a very clever idea because it reduces the number of things that have to be installed on the vehicle and makes for a clean installation. And as you can see, it's slicing into the body of the dash cam. And now I can mount this by peeling this and sticking this to the windshield. And also notice on the left hand side of the mount, we have the input for power in the form of that USB. USB-C type connector. And the mount also has steel capability so I can adjust the mount up or down to adjust the view of the dash cam. And if for some reason I wanted to quickly dismount the dash cam I can do that by sliding the mount out. This will be convenient if you're a convertible owner and don't want to leave anything inside that somebody might potentially want to take. And the last accessory in this box is the power adapter in the form of a cigarette lighter adapter plug but here's the best part about it dual USB ports. This is so convenient. I can power the dash cam and I can charge my phone with the other USB port. And finally we get this user manual in full English with plenty of illustrations showing us how to use the dash cam, showing us how much time we can potentially capture depending on the size of memory card that we install, and also showing us how the dash cam can be installed with nice color pictures on here and the different menu features of the dash cam, as well as instructions for how to download and and use the app as well. And this is the Coxpal Model A11T dash cam. Now normally the dash cam is going to turn on automatically every time we turn on the car, but I like to do this manually so we can see how fast it takes to turn on. <laughs> I like this like 1.6 inch screen. And as you can see, we're actually presented with three camera angles. We are presented with the front camera angle, we're presented with the rear camera angle, and we also have the cabin camera angle. However, I can switch those by clicking on here. And we can see the front camera, the cabin camera, 
And if I click one more time, the rear camera. Now, if for some reason I wanted to have a top secret conversation, I can temporarily mute the microphone by clicking on the down button right here. And you notice that there is a microphone indicator that has now been crossed out. If I press that one more time, the microphone re-enables again. Also, if I wanted to stop the recording, I can press up and that stops the recording. Pressing that button one more time re-enables the recording. But now let's move to the settings of this dash cam. And the very first setting is gonna be resolution. And as you can see, we're currently recording at 2K for the front and high definition for the cabin and the rear camera. However, we can choose to lower that to high definition across the board if we want it to fit more into our memory card. We can also adjust if we feel that the image is a little bit too dark, we can bring up the sensitivity of this dash cam in terms of how it can capture the darkness. But let's talk about the G sensor. This dash cam has the ability to sense when your car got hit and because it's going to sense that your car got into a car crash, it's going to flag that video so you can find it later. Here we can set how sensitive that cam dash cam is going to be to detecting a car crash. If we set this too high, any little bump might accidentally trigger and make the camera think that we got into a car crash, flagging unnecessary videos. So I normally run that on low. Parking mode can be enabled by hardwiring this dash cam to the vehicle. Once it's hardwired, we get quite a bit of adjustability. The very first option is going to be whether to run the parking mode and time lapse where it captures one frame every second or in normal video capture where it captures 30 frames a second. Moving over to the system settings, we can change quite a bit of stuff on here, including how long it takes for the screen to time out. Not because the screen is relatively small, it doesn't bother me to have it on all the time, but we can choose to have it turn off after a certain period of time or we can choose this function, the GPS screen. Let me show you how that looks. And if we select the GPS screen mode, this is what the screen will look like after about a minute. We get our time and we get our speed in miles per hour. But now let's move over to the app to see how that functions. And I have downloaded and installed the app, which is available both for Android and Apple devices. And I have connected to the dash cam. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And what's really cool is that we are presented with a live view from the dash cam now this is the front camera however i can hit the change view right here and now i have the cabin camera shown live to my phone if i click change view one more time now i can see the rear camera live which is really really cool and convenient also we can access all the settings of the dash cam and change all of them from within the app. Every single setting that I showed you on that small screen is accessible through here, including adding your plate number. We can also play back the videos that have been recorded by the dash cam with the playback function. And the videos have been sorted into categories. We have the front camera, inside camera, and rear camera. And we can choose to watch the video directly on our phone or download it for safekeeping. And now that I've shown you the app, let's go over to the view so we can actually see some test drive footage both in day and at night and see how well the dash cam actually performs. And that was the Coxpal A11T triple channel dash cam. 
as you saw, it packs quite a bit of features in a very small package. Now, if you don't need all three channels, I have previously reviewed the Coxpal A9D, which is a standard dual channel dash cam, one for the front and one for the cabin. But if you want the rear camera, I think you wanna go for the three channel version. So I'll put links to both the A11T and the A9D on the description down below in case you wanna look at them further and compare them. If you guys have any other questions regarding this dash cam, please put that in the comments down below. And if you guys found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.